Hello, Facebook. I'm Evan Deshevsky, Features Editor with PCMag.com. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Uh, so let's talk about pornography. Perhaps you've heard of it before. Perhaps you know that it's actually available online. Now, whatever else pornography is, it is also content. And like all content, over the last decade or so, it's really been uh, disrupted by technology, be it music, be it books, be it articles, be it movies, be it pornography. Um, and the way we consume them has radically changed. Now, thanks to technology, it's cheaper to create and distribute porn than ever before. And there's also a lot more out there. Um, there's even a lot of free stuff out there. So it's a very different business than it was even 10 or 15 years ago. So that's one of the reasons we wanted to speak with my guest, Joanna Angel, um, star of stage and screen, and also founder of BurningAngel.com. Joanna, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Thank you so much for joining us. So we, can't, we have Joanna on to talk about the business. Um, I'm going to be asking her some questions about how things have changed and where the industry is going. But if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments on Facebook, any non-creepy questions, and social people will be taking a look and we'll read them live on the air. So, Joanna. Hey, now, question. Am I allowed to say, like, bad words or not? Is this, um, like, totally the FCC won't crack down on us, but... Probably okay. we right. should. Which we're going to try to keep this conversation as PG-13 as okay. possible. Got it. Yeah, great. Okay, so uh, for the first question is, now, at BurningAngel.com, you guys use a subscription model, correct? So yeah. how, how do you or other, or, or maybe I'm wrong, but how do you or other companies kind of survive when there's so much free stuff out there? <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a secret answer because I make new plans every day mm -hmm. you know um i used to be able to make long-term plans and now it's kind of like all right like month to month i see how much money's coming in and i figure out what the hell to do mm -hmm. um i also i try to take advantage of as many mediums as possible you can't make money in porn off of just having it in one place right. you know so people are like oh why make dvds they don't make any money i'm like if something makes some money i'm going to do it so right. we do dvds and we do the internet and i have like hotel you know broadcast deals we have vod deals we have mm -hmm. mobile deals you know um we have tangible products in my online store mm -hmm. i do webcam shows like i literally try to just have my hands on anywhere that you can possibly make money off content and all these Little amounts of money equal up to an okay amount of money. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I um, think, yeah. you know, the key to keeping members is keep your members happy, um, keep the content looking good, update uh -huh. on a regular basis, have the content available in every type of format under the sun so uh -huh. someone using a dial-up modem in the middle of Nebraska can see your content and somebody with a brand new computer can see your content and it works flawlessly on every single browser. Uh -huh. um, you know, the unfortunate state of the industry right now is that you have to work 20 times as hard to make half as much money mm -hmm. <laughs> as you used to. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. Um, it's just, you know, there's no easy money anywhere mm -hmm. in the world. So sure. Yeah, um, we, we know that as well. Uh, yeah, if you're making easy money, then just know it's probably going to end one day and you mm -hmm. need to think of another plan. <laughs> so uh, no, you, it's kind of just, you know, what you have to do when mm -hmm. you're producing content. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned that you were uh, experimenting with new platforms and, diff and different ways to make money. One of the things that we've seen, at least over the last year, has been different companies, and I don't know about you guys, experimenting with uh, virtual reality pornography, or also with um, going into 4K and even 8K, like we're super yeah, high res. I, I haven't jumped on the 4K um, bandwagon. Mm -hmm. um, I looked into it, um, you know, Shooting in 4K costs a lot of money. You know, mm -hmm. the, the file sizes are so big. Mm -hmm. The amount of money I'd be spending in, like, hard drives and stuff alone, it, it, it's an expense. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that extra money that you spend is going to equal extra money that you make. So mm -hmm. I just kind of made a decision and said I don't. I, I don't know. I don't think people go to Burning Angel looking for, like, the newest technology all the time that's mm -hmm. not what we're known for and I think people actually like a lot of our kind of more amateur style videos sometimes mm -hmm. I do find myself spending more money to up production value and it, it just winds up backfiring on me because mm -hmm. I'm like wow people just like this more amateur looking stuff that mm -hmm. is shot with you know oh, an old camera and mm -hmm. very simple lighting so 
Um, you, there's other people in porn doing it. Other people in porn say you have to do it. Mm. And for me, you know, if there comes a day where I feel like that's a need and that's a demand and mm. and people are canceling my website subscriptions because that it's not there, yeah. then, yeah, I'll start doing it. I mean, I shoot two to three movies every single month, so mm. things can change on the fly, you mm. know? Like, I, if I could be like, all right, let's shoot everything in 4K next month, and all of a sudden I'll have three movies shot in 4K, and they'll, you know, and it'll be done, and it'll be done quickly, so... Yeah. Decided not to do that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, VR porn is is become a thing. Um, is it going to be the future? I don't mm -hmm. know. That's what people are saying. Um, I chose to do it with smart. You know, we don't technically have a Burning Angel VR website, but I I got hired to be a director for what I've the most successful porn um, VR company, and it's the Hollow Films. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's all like. Burning Angel style content, you know, it's it's kind of like a partnership between Hollow Girls and VR. And since they already have the traffic of people that want VR, mm -hmm. um, you know, it just kind of made sense. And I'm learning more about it. Um, uh, so right now, that's that's what I'm doing. So we've partnered together, so you could see me and the girls on my site mm -hmm. on Hollow Girls uh, to um, yeah to see VR content. Um, so I'm going to see where it goes mm -hmm. and. Um, and yeah, I, I just kind of like, there's no real answer as mm -hmm. to how to make money right now. You kind of just got to try everything, sure. you know? Um, and also just anybody who's watching on Facebook, if you have any questions, drop them. Non-creepy questions, and actually I think we have our first non-creepy question. I don't care, question. I'll take the creepy questions. Well, we, 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 we have, you know, a reputation to uphold. So, uh, Pete, what is the first non-creepy question you have? Uh, someone asks if there's going to be 8K porn soon. They need it for research. Did you hear that? I don't know. Uh. <laughs> Probably whatever technology comes out, it's going to be used in porn, really, uh -huh. like first. It, it always is. Um. Mm -hmm. That uh, sounds like a lot of K's. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and, like, that, that's actually one of the cool things. Like, pornography has actually really kind of pushed um, technology. It was uh, what pushed the uh, VCRs and DVDs and also what pushed yeah. HD and probably what pushed streaming video as well, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, pornographers shoot more content than just about anybody else. Mm -hmm. So we're always kind of on the, you know, it's not like... A, it, it takes a good year and a half of planning or something mm -hmm. to make like one of those, even just a small Hollywood movie. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Warren, like we're constant, you know, I have mm -hmm. the bigger companies, they're shooting new content every single day, mm -hmm. you know, like, so if there's a new medium to experiment with, they're, they're going to try it. So, mm -hmm. Uh, uh -huh. No, people also at home, if you're not familiar with, with Joanna and Angel, you might have seen like tattoos and like piercings. That's kind of like the genre or of um, Burning Angel. It's a lot of like, you know, tattoos, kind of like punk rock sort of uh, aesthetic. And it, yeah. do you think that being that niche has helped you kind of uh, sustain as a business? Um, yeah, like that's what I was known for. It's kind of funny to think about it now, yeah. like that like... 12 years ago when I started, everyone was like, oh my god, this is revolutionary. You are shooting girls with tattoos. Like, mm -hmm. it's really weird to think about that. And, mm -hmm. like, even while it was happening, I was like, this is really weird that everybody thinks I'm doing something, like, so out of the box. Because I, everyone, all my, like, friends in college and everything, like, all had tattoos. Like, I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't really think what I was doing was a big deal. But it mm -hmm. seemed like everybody else thought it was a big deal. Mm -hmm. Um so I just kind of ran with it, <laughs> and, um, you know, now it's been, I mean, I've been, you know, directing and producing now for 12 years, and, and now there's a lot of heavily tattooed girls mm -hmm. in porn. Um, I still think that girls on Burning Angels have less of that, they're more alternative looking than the mainstream mm -hmm. porn girls that that are heavily tattooed, but regardless, I hope that now... Um, I have a real style of directing that goes, you know, beyond just the aesthetic. Mm -hmm. You know, I think people like Burning Angel movies. Maybe the, at first they liked them just because they were looking for a certain kind of girl, and yeah. now, you know, people, there's more to it than that, um, mm -hmm. which is good because I don't think that's enough to... Mm -hmm to be a genre anymore, sure. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I see uh, we have some more from Facebook. Pete, what you got? Uh, Nate asks, can't you just make more money by making all of the content free but then just using ads as opposed to using uh, subscriptions? Is there an ad-based porn model? What, what is this guy talking about? <laughs> 
I don't know. Do you want to sell like Pepsi ads over your? Do you want to buy? Yeah. Do you want to buy an ad? Who's gonna buy the ad? Tell me. Direct me to the person that wants to hand me money. Mm -hmm. I mean, what? Like, I don't know. People. I mean, a lot of people don't. Buying ads online is, even in general, is not as popular as it used to be. You know, mm -hmm. I felt like on the internet like 12, 15 years ago, companies were spending big money to have like splash pages on things. Now, most people don't even buy ads anywhere. They just use social media. You mm -hmm. know, like even Coke and Pepsi have like giant social media campaigns, and, and they're they're going to use Twitter before they hand over someone money. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. but. Um, Definitely. Now, um, yeah. how, uh, there are a lot of like female porn stars who run their own brands and run their own websites. Um, I, I imagine it's more it's rare that there's someone who's behind the scenes and who's actually like writing checks to other performers. How rare is it that you have a, a female head of a, of a pornography company? I mean, there's a handful of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not. You know, do you mean performers that are also producers? Oh, well, that, own their, own, that, own, that, that own their own content companies. I guess is the question. What? Uh, that, that own their own uh, production companies. Is, is that rare or is that m more more common than well, I think it is? It's more and more common. Yeah. You know, um, I think at this point mine has probably been around the longest. I think I probably have produced more content than any other um, porn star uh, producer, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Um, you know, I find that I do see a lot of girls starting their own production companies, mm -hmm. and then like six months later, they're like, "Why did I? Why am I doing this? Because it's really hard to make money off your porn." You know? Right, right, right. And I don't blame them. I'm, yeah. I'm probably crazy for sticking around for this long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, yeah, in, in the but, decades past, uh, or actually, I think we have some more from Facebook. Pete, what you got? So we see a lot of. Uh, artists now turning to crowdfunding. Is that something that happens in the adult world at all? A couple of people have done it. I'm very anti-crowdfunding in general. Good for you. So, I don't know. I worked really hard. It started my business mm -hmm. from a small amount of money and I used that money to make more money Then I used that money to make more money and I kept a freaking part-time job to pay myself until I could afford to pay myself a salary and I'm just kind of like, I don't know, call me some kind of blue collar small business person. Mm -hmm. um, I see all these people crowdfunding because they want to make movies and it's like, you know, making a movie is not a, it's not a right, it's like a privilege, you mm -hmm. know, if you, if you can't afford to make a movie, then maybe you just shouldn't make a movie. I, I don't know, mm -hmm. like why, why does the rest of the world need to give you money for your you know, for your pipe dream to come true, and um, I don't know. I I I try to, I, you know, I've, mm -hmm. I've never used crowdfunding for anything. Um, uh, I don't know, I, especially to pay for a movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe if like some kind of emergency happened and I mm -hmm. had, you know, legal troubles or something like that, then mm -hmm. maybe something like that would be worthwhile to do crowdfunding for, even though I'd pro I I just don't like begging people for money. I feel mm -hmm. kind of pathetic doing yeah. it. I try to just make my own money and use that. And if I can't figure out how to make money, I think of another plan. And mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I It's actually gotten me into some arguments with people because I have a lot of friends that have you know done their own crowdfunding projects, and because mm -hmm. of the followers I have, they're like, can you can you like tweet a link to my Kickstarter? Can you tweet this? And I, I unfortunately I always say no, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's had some of my friends get really angry at me, mm -hmm. and I'm like, you know, whenever you, I will post a link to a website that sells whatever product you're trying to make. You know, mm -hmm. I'm happy to help my friends out that have small businesses. I always want to help, you know, people mm -hmm. succeed, but I just. I don't know. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just not into this new wave of raising money. I think it's, I don't know, I just don't like it. For sure. That's just my personal yeah. opinion. Um, now, uh, over the last 15 years, pornography, because of the internet and other technologies, has become really ubiquitous, and that's been, uh, you know, when I was a kid or you were a kid, like, you might run into a Playboy in the attic or something like that, but now you can see just about anything from a phone and all sorts of things, basically anything you could think of, you can find it on, like, a you know, high-definition video of it. I was just wondering, like, uh, what kind of effect do you think that's had on society? I mean, uh, this 
new thing that like there's this, all this kind of hardcore pornography available at our fingertips. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that or experience with that? I mean, you know, I can keep it PG-13 too, but yeah. I see. Uh, you know, today's. Uh, I mean, <laughs> your average twenty-year-old mm -hmm. girl or boy is uh, way more uh, experienced than I was okay. at that age. And some people could say that's a bad thing, and some people could say that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, people. People just know a lot more about sex now than they used to. I was clueless. I didn't know anything about sex. Mm -hmm. I was too nervous to ask my friends about it. I didn't talk to my family about it. I, mm -hmm. didn't, I didn't know how to see a porn. And the only porn I did see when I was younger was, like, a magazine. And mm -hmm. I don't even think people were having sex in it. You know, mm -hmm. it's just pictures of naked girls. Yeah, yeah. Um, the people are just way more knowledgeable <laughs> about sex. For sure. Well, I guess uh, on behalf of the world, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, Facebook, I see you got some more questions. Pete, what you got? Sam wants to know, why doesn't anyone in the industry spend more time on the scripts? And would that change with VR? Um, it's really annoying. People like to ask questions about porn, and they don't know anything about porn. I spend a lot of time on my scripts, and I have a lot of of uh, feature movies. I've mm -hmm. won awards for my feature movies. Um, I've won Best Comedy several times. Mm -hmm. um, there's lots and lots of plot-themed, uh, of plot-based movies on my website. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of other companies follow, do the same thing. It's, mm -hmm. This is not a thing, you know, people are like, why, why don't people make movies with plots like they did in the 70s? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's not, there's lots of porn movies with plots that come out every single day. There's entire companies and that's all they shoot. Mm -hmm. um, I have to really be inspired, you know, but, but I do. When I, when I write a script, I spend weeks on it, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I, I work hard on it, and I take it seriously. Um, uh, there's a, there's uh, a bit. But, there's but a, yeah, yeah. Uh, people do. I, I actually think with VR porn, mm -hmm. it's going to be less, because uh, from what I've mm -hmm. seen, because uh, uh, me directing for, for Hollow Girls, I've, you know, told them I've come up with scenarios and they're like, no, we should just, you know, it's just more, it's, I think there's less room for plot in mm -hmm. VR porn. Because it's like when you watch VR porn, you're, you're looking for that closeness with the performer. You're not, you're not like sitting down and watching a movie. And I actually think that might be the reason that, um, I don't know if VR will be the only way we watch entertainment because it's more for visual effects. Um, I think VR needs to um, grow a little bit before, like, before uh, it's just kind of made for people wanting to sit down and watch 10 minutes of a story, you mm -hmm. know? It's more like with, with 3D and stuff. Like, you, you're watching stuff in 3D because you want to see, you want, like, to be on a visual adventure. Mm -hmm. um, you don't really care about the storyline. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, so I think most of the VR porn is very based around the sex mm -hmm. and the girl touching you and the girl being next to you. Um, it's not about mm -hmm. uh, the storyline. But, you know, that could change. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, there's plenty of plot-based pornos. You're probably just looking at the wrong ones. Good. Uh, Facebook, I see you got some more questions. Pete, what you got? Uh, Sorry, am I being a brat? Oh, oh not no, at all. No, 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 no. no. You're, yeah, yeah. We're trying to get, trying to get the audience yeah. in there as well. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, I mean, now it seems like with the age of, like, uh, social media, is like you're more visible than ever. I mean, how is it? How do you feel like you're treated now versus, say, you know, when you first started? Do you feel like it's different, like, in terms of, like, the public and everyone else? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely different. I mean, it's like that for rock stars and actors and actresses, too. Um, I think um, the good thing about social media is, is everyone can get to know you on a different level. And they feel like every fan of mine kind of feels like they're hanging out with me all day. And they're let into my personal life. 
into a way that didn't really exist before. But um, I think the unfortunate part of that, and I think a lot of other performers who have been around, you know, for for the past decade would agree with me. Like, porn stars used to have this celebrity to them that I think social media has kind of made that gone. Like, I mm -hmm. see the way people treat me at, like, conventions, and it's like, it's different now than it used to be. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people are not, like, nervous to, like, approach me in the way that they used to be. People, mm -hmm. I don't know, people, like, talk to me more like they're my best friend than rather than this, like, like, oh, my God, like, I'm a big fan of yours. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, so that's kind of changed. But I think that's changed with, I guess, everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and it's hard for me sometimes because, like, I don't know. Like, I don't want to share every single thought that I have. Mm -hmm on Twitter, you know, like, I, I just don't. I like posting on Twitter. I like posting pictures from my new scenes and video clips and this and that, but, like, I don't want to, you know, and then I feel like, oh, it's part of business now where I just, like, have to, like, share all my personal thoughts mm -hmm. on the Internet. So it's kind of weird, you know. Yeah. I want to just be able to, like, I work really hard on my movies and I work really hard on my content and I want my fans to see that mm -hmm. and um sometimes it's kind of frustrating that that has to come along with like me also telling them like what i ate for breakfast and like you know whatever and and you're you're being like not business savvy if you don't do that these days and it's, mm -hmm. it's just kind of funny and mm -hmm. i don't know but uh eh, this is just the way the world is now you have to in addition to running your business mm -hmm. you have to update your Instagram and you have to update your Twitter and then not only do I have a joint angel Twitter but I have to have a burning angel Twitter and mm. you know you have to make sure you tag the right people or mm. people can get offended and you have to you know it's just kind of like you have to keep up with so many different kinds of social media to to stay in the game. Well you should get a social media uh, manager like we do here with Social Pete. But Joanna, yeah. that is actually... No I do. I, yeah. I do have help. Joanna, Joanna, I believe that's actually all the time we have for this. This has been fascinating. This has been great. Okay. Thank you so much for every time. Um, anything else? Any like big features uh, whose name you can say on the air that you that I have coming up? Um, well, yeah, actually, in honor of Cinco de Mayo, I did shoot a movie in Mexico recently, oh, cool. and um, I don't even know if I can say the title of the movie. <laughs> uh, people, people can look on your website for it. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. go to BurningAngel.com. Yeah. Um, it just debuted on there today, and it'll. Um, make you feel like you're in Mexico, kind of. Great. Well, thank you so much <laughs> for joining us. check it out. Thank you, everyone else who had the questions. Uh, thank and you, everyone. And also, yes. if you want to see, uh, you know, I, I do put a lot of the plots of my movies um, on my YouTube page, mm -hmm. so you can go there and watch the safe-for-work versions of my dirty movies. Um, it's YouTube.com slash Burning Angel Rocks. Great. And, um, yeah, and you can follow me on Instagram or Twitter. It's just at Joanna Angel. Um, and uh, and yeah, please go uh, go watch my my porn. Great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you everyone on Facebook. This has been another great interview. If you want to give us a share or a like, that's a great compliment for us. And we'll yeah. see you next time. Yeah. Thumbs up. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye.